Hello aspirants, I once again welcome you all to Editorial Analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 6th of September 2024. Now before getting into the news article discussion, I have an important announcement for you. See preliminary examination is getting tougher year on year. So we have brought to you the pre stroming test series. It will be starting on 16th September 2024. We have provided you the link for registration in the description. You can click the link and register for the test and check your preparedness. So with this note, let us look into the list of articles that we have chosen for today's discussion. See this first article we are going to see about the Food Security Act and some of the recent amendments made to the particular act. Then as the second discussion, we will be seeing about India's cooperation with the Global South. So this is what we are going to see in this news article analysis. So without much delay, let us get into the news article. Look at this article about National Food Security Act. Now currently it is in news because the author of the article states that the reforms that have been taken to the PDS system has reduced leakages and benefited a lot of population. So she has also given data point to support the argument. This is what the article is about. In this news article discussion, let us revise about the features of NFSA from the mains perspective. Now before getting into that, you have to know what is food security see in indian constitution we have right to life under article 21 how we can get right to life without food security so this means food security is an essential component of right to life now let us see some of the characteristics of food security see firstly it should be readily available it should be easily accessible to the people and it should be utilized in the right form because it will be stored in the right way providing adequate nutrition to the people living within a boundary of a country. Apart from this, it should be available in a steady manner and the prices should also be and the prices should also be steady throughout the year. Apart from this, it should be sustainable, meaning it should be available for the present and future generation and the way how it is cultivated, it should be environmentally good and economically viable. Finally, it should be inclusive, meaning even a tribe who does not have access to the food, even they should be provided with nutrient food. So all these are the pillars of food security or the characteristics of food security. Now with this basic understanding, let us see some of the features of this National Food Security Act 2013. See this National Food Security Act 2013 has shifted the welfare based to right based approach meaning now a larger population of the people they can claim their food security as a right. So it covers really 75 percentage of people in rural and 50 percentage of people in the urban population and it also empowers women how the oldest woman who is greater than 18 years they can be the head of the ration card issued so this also allows for woman empowerment talking about nfsa implementation and coverage it currently has 80 crore people coverage under this particular act and the identification of beneficiaries is a continuous process meaning dead people will be excluded and newly born will be included so it is a continuous process apart from this act has food security allowance meaning if the particular family if they did not get the particular food item they will be provided with cash to purchase the particular good from the open market so this nfsa act has this food security allowance as a provision to it now let us see about the responsibilities under nfsa how it is shared see the central government will take care of alloc allocation and transport of food grains to the state depots and to fair price shops the state government or the union territory government they will be they will be implementing the act by identifying the beneficiaries and they will distribute food through managing the ration cards and addressing their grievances. So this is how the NFSA, so this is how the responsibility under NFSA is actually divided. Now let us quickly go through the coverage and entitlement under NFSA. See the first important thing is this Antodaya Anna Yojana or AY households. See these are the poorest households. They are entitled to 35 kilogram of food grains per family per month. Apart from this, there are priority households. They are eligible households below certain income level. So they are entitled to 5 kilogram of food grains per person per month. So this is regarding the coverage and entitlement under NFSA. This NFSA also has a central issue price or the CIP. See this CIP is nothing but the subsidized price at which the center sells food grain to the state or the union territory for the public distribution system. So what the state government do is they purchase at this CIP from the central government and 
depending upon the regional disparity the state governments again provide a subsidy making it accessible to even the vulnerable people in a particular location so this is how this cip under nfsa actually works and remember this price will be adjusted periodically by the central government and the subsidies given by the state government it varies from the state to state apart from this this nfsa has a provision for direct benefit transfer this is to targeted public distribution system see under this dbt system cash subsidy is directly deposited to the bank account of the beneficiaries so this is actually a reform that reduces the leakages corruption hoarding and even the foot loss due to storage so instead of just giving an entitlement to a particular family under this dbt the amount will be provided and they will be asked to go to the open market and buy it from the open market so this will reduce logistics benefit autonomy in food choices and it will help in encouraging the dietary diversity and also minimizes leakage improve targeting of subsidies and provide financial inclusion due to dpt so after the implementation of nfsa 2013 we have certain changes for example the pds coverage has been expanded and this has reduced the exclusion errors secondly it has increased coverage for example from 2011 to 12 it was only 50 percentage and in 2022 to 23 it is about 70 percentage however it is still below the nfsa mandate so now we shall see what are all the challenges with respect to this nfsa act see the first thing is policy experiments we have shortcomings in gas transfer and the policy experiments like door delivery could risk the pds secondly the issue of delayed census due to this nearly 100 million people are excluded from getting the benefit that is available to all thirdly more nutritious items should be added for example the pulses millets even then the edible oil it can be added to the pds system to actually realize the food security in india so in this news article discussion we saw what is food security then we saw what are all the provisions very important provisions of national food security act then we saw the challenges regarding it now i have a main question for you this is a practice question you can write an answer for this particular question and post it in the comment section so with this let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article about global south currently it is in news because our prime minister has attended the third voice of global south summit in short called as vogss so in this news article discussion let us see what are all the outcomes of this particular summit and then we shall see about the global south cooperation and the challenges in it so let's start with the highlights of the global south summit see the first important thing is our prime minister has called for new baseline for cooperation so when it comes to global south we actually mean all the underdeveloped undeveloped or the developing countries so all these countries they lack a proper framework where they can coordinate and integrate for any kind of economical or political engagement so for this our prime minister has called for a new baseline for cooperation so this is the first highlight secondly india has portrayed its digital public infrastructure model through which both the financial and digital sector could be integrated for the utmost benefit of the economy so by showcasing this digital public infrastructure model our government has asked for financial and digital inclusion and future cooperation in this particular sector thirdly india has showcased its health security and called for one world one health by promoting ayurveda and traditional medicine so these three are all the highlights of the global south summit now let us see the key milestone see the first thing is india's diplomatic outreach india advocated for global governance reforms and inclusive representation we have been doing this quite a long time a very good example for this is india's advocacy for adding african union in the g20 secondly india focused more on shared experiences economic aid than sharing technology and capacity building so these are all the key milestones of the summit now let us quickly go through some of the challenges in the south south cooperation so the first thing is the debt burden most of the countries in the global south they are 
using their majority of fund for debt repayment. So, this is limiting the ability of these economy to have economic ties. So, the debt burden is the first challenge. Secondly, institutional fragmentation. There is a lack of coordination and integration when it comes to Global South. They don't have a, they don't have a legal framework to have engagement in the first place. So, this institutional fragmentation is another challenge. Thirdly, financial shortfalls. Global South has limited access and they rely on expensive loans. So, they have very short or limited resources this again affects the engagement of global south and the south south cooperation finally the global south is the most vulnerable when it comes to climate change most of the bush fires most of the heat wave incidents actually happen in the global south and people living in global south they become victim of or they are very vulnerable to climate change so these are all certain challenges in south south cooperation now let us quickly go through some of india's initiative to address the global south south cooperation the first important initiative is this lifestyle for environment or the life initiative this promotes sustainable development by sharing eco-friendly techniques secondly we pitched for health security and we have also made contributions through Oishman Bharat and traditional Indian medicines thirdly we have provided humanitarian assistance which has led to relief operations in many conflict zones a very good example for this is our assistance during the Hamas Israel Palestine war then we have the digital public infrastructure or the DPI this actually includes all the digital innovations like Aadhaar UPI and DigiLocker and we have improved public service delivery through digital governance finally we have capacity building operations like Dakshin and ITEC for knowledge sharing and capacity building and for the skill development so these are all some initiatives of India. So, now let us quickly go through what can be done in the near future. See, firstly, we can ask for global governance reforms so that many global south will be included and heard about their problems. Secondly, we should work towards a debt relief mechanism. So, this will help the countries which are actually burdened with debt trap. Thirdly, we can expand educational and technological exchange. And finally, we have to reduce the impact of the climate change through sustainability and climate actions. So, these are all the way forwards when it comes to South-South cooperation or the Global South cooperation. Now, I have a main question. It is a practice question for you. South-South cooperation plays an important role in the economic development of developing countries. Discuss in the context of India's foreign policy. You have to write this question for 15 marker for 250 words. You can write answer and post it in the comment section for review. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now thank you so much for listening.